maxillary first molar in this video we are going to discuss about the lingual aspect mesial aspect and distal aspect starting with the lingual aspect from the lingual aspect it is not very difficult to differentiate between the distal outline and the mesial outline this is because on the distal outline you will find a smooth curvature which merges with the roundness of the distolingual cusp later this is continued with the lingual developmental groove in the mesial and cervical direction you can also appreciate a shallow depression on the lingual aspect which starts from the end point of the lingual groove then continues to the center of the lingual surface at the cervical line continues in the apical direction and fades somewhere near the middle third of the lingual root cusp we can see only the lingual cusp from this aspect these are the mesolingual and the distolingual cusp the mesolingual cusp is the largest and the longest cusp but due to the occlusal wear it does not remain the longest cusp throughout the throughout its life if we divide the cusp into five parts the three parts alone will be occupied by the mesolingual cusp and the rest two parts by the distolingual cusp the mesial outline of the crown and the mesial slope of the mesolingual cusp forms almost a 90 degree then the mesial slope and the distal slope of mesolingual cusp forms an obtuse angle the angulation of the tip of the distolingual cusp cannot be described as it is very smooth and spheroidal in shape lingual developmental groove lingual developmental groove starts in the center mesial distally then moves in the distal direction as it crosses the two cusp that is mesolingual and distolingual cusp fifth cusp fifth cusp is seen on the mesolingual cusp more towards the mesial side it is seen as an irregular developmental groove you can see a irregular developmental groove which starts in the mesolingual line angle where there is an depression then it moves occlusally then takes a sharp turn forming an obtuse angle and then terminates somewhere near the lingual groove the fifth cusp tip forms an obtuse angle but it is so sharper and less obtuse than the mesolingual cusp that is it is more sharper and less obtuse in comparison to the mesolingual cusp tip the tip of the fifth cusp and the mesolingual cusp are at the distance of somewhere around 2 mm roots on the lingual aspect which can be seen from the lingual aspect are lingual root mesobuccal root and the distobuccal root the entire cervical portion of the root trunk continues into the lingual root the lingual root is conical and has a blunt apex coming to mesobuccal root we can see the mesial outline from this aspect and the round apex of the mesobuccal root distobuccal root if we divide this distobuccal root into three parts the middle part and the apical part that is middle third and the apical third can be seen from this aspect and we can also see the sharp blunt apex mesial aspect if we see the tooth from the mesial con me, uh, if we see the tooth at the right angle to the mesial contact area then we can see mesobuccal cusp mesolingual cusp fifth cusp mesobuccal root and the lingual root the mesobuccal root is very much broader that's why we can not see distobuccal root from this aspect discussing the buccal outline it starts from the cervical line forms a short arch in the buccal direction which is around 0.5 mm then it forms a shallow concavity which continues as a slight convex which continues into a slight convexity and then ends at the tip of the mesobuccal cusp the lingual outline is somewhat similar to the buccal outline it also shows an arch at the beginning from the cervical line in the outward in the lingual direction if the fifth cusp is well developed you can see a dip inwards if it is not you will not see it after discussing the buccal outline and the lingual outline it's time to discuss the mesial marginal ridge the mesial marginal ridge is formed by 
the slopes of the mesolingual cusp and the distal uh, mesolingual cusp and meso buccal cusp where these two cusp slopes join there is there they form a curvature which moves in the cervical direction as this mesial marginal ridge continues it forms it moves irregularly in the cervical direction to the one fifth of the crown one fifth of the crown that is if we divide the crown into five portion it will cover the one part which is somewhere near to the tip of the fifth cusp cervical line it uh, it shows a curvature in the occlusal direction and by rule the curvature is not more than 1 mm mesial contact area mesial contact area lies somewhere apical to the mesial marginal ridge if we divide the crown into three parts it will lie somewhere at the junction of the occlusal third and the middle third if we divide the crown into two parts in the buccolingual direction then you will find this area buccal to the center again a shallow concavity can be seen which extends into the mesobuccal root till the bifurcation area mesobuccal root it is broad it is flat and you can also see a smooth fluting on part of it if we divide the tooth into three parts at the area of bifurcation then two parts alone will be occupied by the mesobuccal root and one part by the lingual root discussing the buccal outline of the mesobuccal root it starts from the cervical arch and then moves outward and upward from the crown and ends into a blunt apex the lingual outline of the mesobuccal root is relatively straight from the blunt round apex lingual root lingual root is longer and narrower very well apparent in the diagram it is banana shaped it shows a convex outline on the lingual surface and concave outline on the buccal surface the lingual root is has a more rounded apex still it feels pointed because of the overall morphology of the mesobuccal root and the lingual root distal aspect from distal aspect we can see most of the buccal side this is because of the tapering on the buccal side that is the mesial side is larger than the distal side which gives a slant on the buccal side therefore we can see the buccal surface more from the distal aspect considering the distal marginal ridge it starts it shows a sharp dip in the cervical direction which reveals the triangular ridge which is which is behind it on the occlusal surface cervical line is almost straight opposite of that what we saw on the mesial aspect here the curvature is apically and just 0.5 mm again there is a shallow concavity but somewhat smaller than what we saw on the other aspect this shallow concavity continues on the distal buccal root and ends somewhere near the bifurcation of the root distal buccal root buccal outline it starts from where the distal buccal cusp ends it follows a concave path then a convex arch and then ends into a round apex the entire buccal outline is inside the buccal outline of the mesobuccal root considering the lingual outline from the apex to the bifurcation it shows a slight concavity then later as it reaches the root trunk it shows a convexity bifurcation it is maximum on the distal aspect that is 5 mm and minimum on the mesial aspect that is 3 mm and somewhere between on the buccal aspect which is 4 mm this brings us to the end of this video hope you learned something if you did then please like share and subscribe bye